reason number 823 why hammocks are cooler than tents because they fit in the places like that. Howdy homies, yesterday we made the, I made a four and a half hour drive up here to Maine. Craig and I stayed at a public campsite called Trout Brook Campground. <laughs> How you doing? It's a free campground out here in the Bigelow Preserve. We're all packed up and we're gonna head to the boat launch, get our adventure on. Flagstaff, here we come. Nice save. Did you get that? Yep. On camera? Yep. Wow. That would have sucked. That would have sucked bad. Oh, shit. What a way to start a trip. <laughs> Pay attention. Oh my god, it's never happened before. That was one hell of a save. I had to. I had one shot. It was going down fast. You got any clues or anything? Of course I do. No, just. But it's all mine. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are on Flagstaff Lake up in Maine. Our plan is to be out here for seven days, but other than that, that's it. That's our plan. We don't know where we're camping. We're just gonna paddle around and figure it out. And that's the fun of it. That is the adventure. Flagstaff is a huge lake. It's humongous and it's man-made and much of its shoreline is just completely undeveloped. There is some development, but not much. And a lot of the shoreline is actually encompassed in the Bigelow Preserve public lands, so looking forward to a to a quasi wilderness experience there are boat launches so we'll see boats i'm sure of it and this is the last week of september so this is it for fishing season so i do expect to see some people out here first fish of the trip right there nice little yellow perch that's good eating but a little early in the day just had me a breakfast sandwich at the general store these things are delicious you're lucky on the board. Woo. It is said that Benedict Arnold and his men took rest in this area on their way to attack Quebec. Upon his order, a flagstaff was erected. The raising of this flagstaff is how the area got its name. The year was 1775. The United States of America was just a concept worth fighting for. It was an early flag with 13 stars. So we were just at Savage Farm campsites, really nice. I'm quite sure that we'll be hitting that up later during the week. There's more like to see and it's really early in the day still. It's only about 12.30, so we didn't want to stay put. Just heading up the lake, cruising, loving it. That's awesome. Such cool creatures. I want to see one. I want to see one out here. Look at this. Pretty awesome. It's about 2.30 right now, and the water is unbelievably calm. It's crazy. It's so nice out. The water's like glass. And a loon just popped up right in front of me. 175 years after Benedict's famous visit, a dam was built on the Dead River, creating a body of water that would swell to over 20,000 acres in size to become the fourth largest lake in Maine. It was 1950. In the process of becoming the lake we know today, lives were upended. Entire towns were submerged. Flagstaff Plantation, Dead River Plantation and the Bigelow Township, all of them completely submerged. There's much folklore about it today. Some even say it's haunted. It's a strange feeling floating over a ghost town. Well, we found our campsite for the night. Check out this view. It's 
it's campsite is pretty nice spread out fire pit there's this very unique wind block Got a sink <laughs> picnic table a bar that's right it's not a bad place to hang out spend some time feels good to take those boots off yeah, I'm gonna do that as soon as I get water. For this week's adventure, I am using my superior gear, 30 degree hammock. Integrated under quilt rated for 30 degrees. I've got it hung with the superior gear suspension system, which I've really come to like. This is this is my favorite suspension setup so far. For my quilt, I'm using my get out gear, puffy down, 45 degree. This thing right here for the money, I don't think you can beat it. It's awesome. I've been using it for a couple years now. It's great. I mean, this is a budget quilt. It costs like 70 bucks. Down, rated for 45 degrees, one pound, $70. I like it so much that I have not at any time felt the need to upgrade to a much more expensive one. It works for me, it's working great. And that's topped off with my Warbonnet Superfly tarp, which I have folded in half and pinned back because we're not expecting any rain tonight. I like to sleep out in the open as much as possible. In the event that it starts to rain, all I do is unhook that end of the tarp, fold it over and pin it down. These things work great and they've never let me down. Not yet. And because I'm sleeping really close to the water, I'm going to use my undercool protector. Open this up a little bit so it's nice and loose for ventilation. It's not terribly cold. This is just to protect my underquilt from moisture. For a pillow, I use my down jacket stuffed inside a fleece pillowcase that I made. Works great. So I'm sitting here drinking my PBR and admiring the beauty of that bench. Whoever built it really put in some time because as you sink down like so, the top of that bench matches that shoreline almost perfectly. That cannot be a coincidence. Somebody put some time into that. That thing is awesome. All this stuff is cooking down nicely. Now I'm gonna throw in some pulled pork. This is leftover pulled pork that I made for a party we recently had, and it is fantastic. I took a big chunk of it, froze it for this trip. It's still actually partially frozen. I'm having a hard time getting through it. We're just gonna let all that cook down and then add some cheese. That's gonna be wicked good, bub. Now that this has all been 
cooking for a while and melding together. I'm gonna turn off the heat and let it sit. Craig's got a good fire going now, so I'm just gonna let all these flavors sit here and do their thing. Reheat it on the fire when I'm ready. There it is, guys. With some gachu. The squirrels, they're relentless. They're bombing us with their pine cones. What a way to wake up. Some really fresh deer tracks. Those are from this morning. You can still see the moisture. Pretty crazy to think that at one point someone had just finished making that and it was brand new. If this thing could tell stories, I'd like to hear them. An old engine of some sort. It's pretty cool. Check this out. It's been sitting there for a few minutes. That's so cool. <laughs> the squirrels are bombing Craig with, <laughs> with the pine cones. <laughs> I'll get you <laughs> and your brother too. Yesterday, Craig and I happened across this awesome campsite that we're at and we've decided that we're going to stay here again today just kind of slower pace today base camp here check out the area fish eat explore all at our leisure because yesterday was a pretty ambitious day and today we just want to slow it down a little bit so that's where we're at this section has a really rocky shoreline Huge contrast to the other part of the lake. Being that I skipped breakfast and I'm having a slightly late lunch, I'm going to have breakfast for lunch. It's going to be epic.
tonight for dinner, I'm having spaghetti with meatballs and pasta sauce. My wife made some homemade meatballs and I made a sauce to go with it. It's got peppers, and onions, garlic, all the good stuff. Froze it, threw it in my cooler. Here we are, day three. This is gonna be good. It's to Maine, man. Maine. Another trip to Maine. The great state of Maine. Cheers. Blackstaff. Spaghetti, meatballs, cheddar cheese. Ah, oh, yeah. That was a lot of food. I can't finish it. I'm gonna have to sacrifice the rest to the fire gods. This morning for breakfast, I'm having some granola with some oatmeal, powdered milk, coffee, carnations to breakfast. Quick, easy, warm, delicious. 37 grams of whey protein isolate. It may seem kind of weird, but I really like mixing in a pack of oatmeal with my granola. And I toss in some powdered milk. That is a nice, warm, filling breakfast. Lots of calories. This little 550 Tokes cup works perfectly. It's a lightweight body for a French press. Perfect for one cup of coffee. Life's too short to drink bad coffee. Craig and I are paddling back into the area we were checking out yesterday. Yesterday it was a bit windy, choppy, big water. We just decided to stay put in hopes of today being a day to get out there and check it out. And here we are, so really excited. The area we're heading into is, I mean, it's huge. It's like its own lake and there's no development on it at all, at all. So we're just gonna paddle around and do some fishing, check things out and see where the day takes us. Really excited. Yeah, that coffee, I can feel it kicking in. Woo, all hopped up on the bean. Every trip that I've been on this summer, it's rained. I've had to cut short in one way, shape or form, just foul inclement weather. And the loons, good morning loon. Anyway, as I was saying, before the loon rudely interrupted, 
rain all summer long and it's been great so far and the forecast says more of the same so and let's say good morning to craig folks hey folks that is a big bird that's the king of the lake right there Conditions are so much different. What a difference a day makes. We didn't see one single person yesterday. The only person I saw all day long was Craig. This is the sunburst by bending branches. It's got that nice carbon shaft. I figured it was a really good match for this North Star Trillium stealth canoe. They go together like peanut butter and jelly, meant for each other. This is exactly what I think of when I think main shorelines. Rocky, wild, difficult. found this really cool beach. It's just this little strip. Check this out. I'm having a better day than whatever that was. Almost looks like an eagle. That's what caught my attention. I saw that from the water. That's wild. Picked a good place to die. It's wild out here. Tuna, dehydrated tomatoes, bacon pieces, some gray pecan mustard, and some cabbage and carrots. That's gonna be pretty good. Just had a really good lunch, which I needed. I was very hungry. It's about quarter after one back on the water now we're gonna make our way to the other shore and just start paddling around and hopefully find a spot to camp in the next few hours it's nice out here colors are starting to pop that sun still has some power to it i'm hot I'm sweating every time i put my glasses on they fog up it's almost october man i'm using my tripod to gravity filter some water. <laughs> Never done that before. Hey, whatever floats your boat, right? Craig and I pulled up onto this island to check it out. We got another dead bird. That is really fresh, really cold water. Well guys, it looks like we found ourselves a nice little spot on this beach. Got a really nice run of beach here. The sun is hot, but I found a spot in the woods here where I can hang up my hammock. Let me show you. my 
life jacket on it so I'd find it again. This tree to that tree right there. Now that I have that all figured out, it's time to unload the canoe. Looks like you want to be careful out here barefoot. One thing I do like to do when I'm out in the woods is remove all the branches that can poke your eyes out. So anything like that, head height that I can run into. Because when you're messing around in the dark, with your headlamp, sometimes you can't see those things and you don't want to run into them. That'd suck. So that's it though. That's all I had to do. And this hammock is set up in here nicely. Got a nice little spot for the night. I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna go swimming. That felt great. Nice dip in some cold water, some fresh clothes. And now I'm ready for a beverage. Yes, beverages. Craig got a fire going and no saws required. There is so much wood. Look at it all. Just driftwood. There's enough wood here for a week. Hot sauce, styling. There's some old moose poop. There's my hammock. Justin's peanut butter, some Swiss colony, strawberry preserves. Yeah. Well, folks, after two years of use, my do-it-yourself ground sheet for the, for the chair has failed. Got a leg puncture push through here. So I think a little bit of uh, tape is in order. Let's see if we can get another two years out of it. Or maybe I'll just make another one out of Tyvek. Maybe I'll do both. I kind of want to see how much I can get out of this. Two years for a tarp and duct tape. That's not bad. What a spectacular morning. This whole experience has been pretty awesome, but yesterday in particular, it was just incredible. We had no plan, just pile around, check out this lake, explore some islands, try and find some campsites, and we're gonna end up where we ended up, and we ended up here, and it was incredible. We didn't see anyone yesterday, not another soul. No one else was out here. It's two days in a row, we haven't seen anybody. Even as we were sitting here last night with our fire, looking out along the shoreline and whatnot, there were no lights, there were no campfires, there was nothing, it was just us. That's really hard to find in New England. And to be able to come out here to a place that's just accessible <laughs> and not see anyone else is a real surprise to me. I really enjoyed it a lot. That was amazing. Last night was perfect. It's not a night that I'll soon forget, that's for sure. Having a really good time. 
top notch. The only thing that would make it better, and I'm not complaining, but the fishing. There are trout in here, but from what I've read, the the lake reaches critically high temperatures for the trout population in the summertime. It's not a very deep lake, so it's just a man-made impoundment and they stock it with trout to keep them going for whatever reason, to feed the other fish or attract fishermen because they claim there's trout in here. To sum it all up, what an awesome day yesterday was. Yesterday is like exactly what I dream of doing, just paddling around and finding a spot to camp. No booking campsites, no having to be somewhere on a particular day. Just wing it, go for it, end up where you are, make the best of it. Reason number 823 why hammocks are cooler than tents. Because they fit into places like that. Making our way to Hurricane Island. Right there. Well, Hurricane Island is nice, but it's only like 2.30. I don't really want to be sitting around for all that time. So we're going to cruise around and look for something else. It's 4 o'clock and Craig and I have apparently lucked out once again. We have found a magnificent little beach site. What a view. The sun should be setting over there. Can't complain. Bevy time. Ooh, I've been looking forward to this for a couple hours now. It's been really hot today. Today was hot. I feel like I got quite a bit of sun. Yeah. Ice cold. Oh, it feels so good. Oh, that feels good. Beer, erotica. Founders. Yummy. I'm going to take my chances and sleep in it just like this tonight. No tarp. I haven't needed my tarp for the last two nights, three nights. The weather has been holding true to the forecast. And the forecast says no rain in sight. So I'm going for it. Risk take a. For dinner tonight, we have some seriously fine cuisine. Chipotle corn chowder with some bacon bits. I'm going to add a pack of chicken. And I'm going to have an Asiago cheese bagel, half of it to go with it. And look at that. Yes, it's beautiful. Cheers, folks. Bacon bits. I found that this is a pretty versatile stove. I really like it. It can boil a lot of water really fast and it can also simmer, do soups and stuff. It's great. The legs also make it adjustable and versatile. Thing's pretty awesome. Just like that. I just throw the the bagel in there and let it soften up, absorb all the moisture. Almost go into dumpling mode, basically. That was really good. Not a bad way to wake up. I 
wish somebody had told me about hammocks before someone told me about hammocks because I wasted a lot of years in tents. <laughs> We've got really good weather for the next two days. The weather has been sticking to the forecast, so I'm pretty much counting on it. And we have a plan. So we're gonna get on the water here shortly and try and execute that plan. And we'll see if all goes accordingly. Yesterday, I used some duct tape to make that repair on my chair crown sheet and it held. It worked last night. So I got that going for me, which is nice. It's quarter of nine and we're off. And thus it begins a nice night at a nice site. Yeah, got my rain jacket on because it's a little chilly out. It's breezy. What time is it, like nine? Quarter of. What a stunning morning to be on the water. Wow. This is incredible. I've got my, my line in the water doing some trolling using the Thomas Buoyant Gold. Looking for some action. This is awesome. <laughs> Very easy to see how people can lose their way. It's just kind of paddling down the lake. And then once I really got socked in, I decided to bear right and head for the shoreline. But you got no idea where it is. Just hope and pray. That's wild. As I was paddling, I could see the eagle come down in the water way up ahead of me and grab a fish. And then it flew off and landed on that little island. And there just happened to be a little patch of land right there that I could stop and get some footage of them. I wish I could have gotten them taken off and flying, but it wasn't in the cards. I'm not gonna complain because that was an awesome experience. What a great morning to be on the water. This is just fantastic. Got quite a pickerel here. Got the old slime dart here. Look at that fish. Pickerel. Look at those things. Good one, going back. And off he goes. I'm gonna try and find a spot on one of these islands to have some lunch. They look pretty rocky, but I'm hoping there's a spot. Check it out, guys. Neat little island. Little, very little. You guys know the drill. Boom.
Craig and I have made it to the campsite that we wanted to get to. It's an island that we found two days ago. And I'm not going to tell you where it is, but I'll tell you that it's really, really cool. That's not so bad. That's my view that way. I can work with that. And here's my view from the hammock. Yeah. And this is my front porch. Those fall colors are really starting to pop now. Popping. Acid Boatworks Rapid Fire. That's Craig's. North Star Trillium. I'm going fishing. I just cannot take the temptation. My will is weak. A yellow perch. There's something about trolling. I'm watching that tip rocking back and forth. Tick, 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 tick. Just waiting for it to bend over. With those glorious mountains in the background. Life is good. There's my accommodations for the night. Pretty sweet. I decided to set up my tarp as a windbreak. Makes a pretty big difference blocking out all the wind coming from that direction. Tonight for dinner, nothing crazy. Peak refuel, chicken, teriyaki, and rice. My buddy backpacking with Jason gave me this um, maybe two years ago. <laughs> and he keeps telling me I gotta try it, so I'm trying it. All I have to do is add one and one third cup of boiling water to this bag and wait. Gotta say, I'm looking forward to trying this. Smells like a Chinese restaurant. I ate it all, but I'd say it's okay at best. The chicken broccoli alfredo was way better. Eh. The ceremonial opening of the last beer of the trip. That's it, folks. Another very successful night of sleep. There's the sun peeking out. The hammock is right there. And right there, I just noticed, is more dead bird. And check this out, over here. Is more dead bird. Pretty wild. I've never seen so many dead birds in my life. It's very interesting. I'd like to know why that is. I'd like to know what kind of birds they are. As of now, it remains a mystery.
It was a very enjoyable morning. I think this might be my new favorite camping spot. Right here. We're all packed up. We're out of here. It's our last full day. These guys just swallow these hooks. Voracious eaters. We're lucky that these things don't eat people. <laughs> gnarly, gnarly fish. Snack time. Chicken bites, jalapeno. These things are really good. And honey almonds. Guys, we've made it to the Savage Farms campsites. Real nice spot. It's the last night of the trip, so I'm going to make a beverage before I set my stuff up. I've got a lemon, made some iced tea with the powdered iced tea here. I brought two of these frozen in this cooler and that's kept my stuff cold all week long, which is pretty awesome. And now on the last night, I have a bunch of cold water to drink. Oh, and the magic ingredient, bourbon. It's the last night of the trip. And there's no rain in the forecast, so I'm throwing caution to the wind. I'm not using a tarp at all. I've pretty much gotten away without complete tarp coverage for the whole trip. No reason to start now. It is a really small world. As Craig and I were paddling here, we could see the first powerboat that we've seen the whole trip way over on the opposite shore. Passed us, then he turned around and went back past us again. And as we were pulling up to this campsite, he was here. He's having lunch with his one of his friends. And uh, turns out the bench that I've been oogling over at the campsite way over on the other side of the lake, he was there when one of his buddies made it. We chit-chatted about it for quite a bit. And uh, it's just incredible that two out-of-staters floating around on this <laughs> huge lake, and we happened to run into one of the... Per one yeah. of the people that happens to have a hand in building that thing. It's, it's pretty wild. He was telling us about how his buddy is quite the artisan. He was out there with a chainsaw, cutting up the blowdown. The tree had blown down, so they decided to do something cool with it, and they <laughs> made a badass bench out there with hand tools and a chainsaw and fitting everything all nice and tight. Pretty awesome. I could tell that that thing was nice, and someone put some time into it. And... Now we know. It's incredible. Small world. Oh, <laughs> right there. A crazy predatory fish right there.
smaller one, but still. Look at the size of that moose print thing is huge. <laughs> that is a big critter. I'm out for the evening paddle, so I figured I might as well stop along the shoreline and grab some driftwood. That'll come in handy tonight. Stuff is everywhere. Line is in the water. Wood is in the boat. I'm gonna make my way back to camp, which is right along that shoreline over there. Tonight for dinner, I'm having mac and cheese, a packet of chicken, bacon, powdered milk. This is the North Star Trillium Stealth, and she's taken a couple good whacks on this trip. You get those big boulders lurking just beneath the surface, and you don't see them until you're riding them. Just surface crashes. Nothing crazy. So the Stealth package can definitely take some hits. It's not a whitewater boat, but it's not going to crumple on you either. She's all packed up, ready for the final paddle of the trip. I can see the bridge, I can hear the road. I've got about a mile left of the last big paddle of the season. It's a little bittersweet, won't be long. We'll be putting our canoes away, getting ready for winter. This wasn't even the trip that we had in mind originally. This was a plan B, a rushed plan B. We figured out we were coming here literally a day before our trip started. So that was pretty intense. Real quick plan B, and what a plan B it was. This lake blew my mind. I think it's my new favorite lake. I'm pretty sure it's my new favorite lake. The fishing, it's great if you're into pickerel and perch. I gotta, I gotta start targeting perch a little bit more. But miles and miles and miles and miles of undeveloped shoreline. It's a magnificent lake. It's huge, it's sprawling. And we caught it at the right time of year. We only saw one powerboat the whole time. And the guy with the motorboat that we were talking to yesterday, he said that this is the longest stretch they've had without rain all season long. It's been the same way everywhere this year, it seems, in New England. Just a really, really wet year. Every trip that I've done this year has had rain, quite a bit of rain. And most of those trips were cut a day or two short because of all that rain. And we just had somebody looking out for us on this one to give us a good one because it was fantastic. What a stellar trip. Future Justin has a lot of editing to do. Took a lot of video of this trip. <laughs> a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed this trip. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you next time.